Ladies and gentlemen, uh, honoured guests, welcome to my turbulent 18 months as the Lord Mayor of Oxford. At the time I accepted the honour of being Lord Mayor, in autumn 2018 the world was a very different place. Boris Johnson was still perceived as being mostly harmless. People were still chanting, oh Jeremy Corbyn, Donald Trump seemed an immovable force, and Covid might just as well have been a new online streaming service. I chose Oxford Low Carbon Hub and Asylum Welcome as my two good causes. It was a notable year for both. The climate emergency entered our collective vocabulary and the migrant crisis kept refugees in the news. As a result, I found myself very busy spreading the word on both of these topics as well as helping my good causes promote their activities. My own fundraising efforts were challenging with two events cancelled, but I still managed to raise over £14,000 for these two good causes. I pledged to be a net zero carbon Lord Mayor. Uh, clearly due to Covid only 10 months could be considered normal, but I did turn down several invitations to fly overseas instead offering to appear on video. The total footprint for the 18 months for myself and the Lady Mayoress was just over half a tonne of carbon dioxide. Less than two return flights to Bonn. I have, as promised, offset this carbon. Uh, as the Deputy Lord Mayor and Sheriff will attest, I rarely turn down events during my 18 months in office and try to represent the many faces of the city and the council to the best of my abilities. I try to be as approachable and inclusive as possible, including a strong social media presence with a new Lord Mayor's Twitter account, which I hope will be continued. In addition to the formal dinners, AGMs, official ceremonies, outdoor events, concerts and online meetings, certain things stand out. Receiving a present of a candle with my face on it. Being a guest newsreader for the Association for the Blind audio newsletter. I sung and played guitar on stage several times to raise money for charity. I had to provide a vegan recipe for a Russian cookbook and appeared on Russian television. I participated in an ad hoc Tai Chi demonstration. I had a fascinating video conference with the Mayor of Mogadishu where the main topic of conversation was sewage. I recorded a music video during lockdown supporting the NHS and played an online computer game with Oxford University students. And on my first day in office I welcomed Prince Harry to Oxford. Of course no one told me I would have to give a welcoming speech or that the event would be videoed and put on the Royal Family Twitter account. So there's just time to thank family, friends, civic office staff and the Lady Mayoress and other civic office holders for their help and support over the 18 months. And normally at this point I'd be presenting a small gift to the civic office staff and when the town hall opens again they will get a seasonal colourful bouquet from a local independent florist. People who know me know I'm fond of the haiku, Japanese short form of poetry, so here is my final contribution. Just when my speeches were honed, refined and improved, I am left speechless. I'd like to formally invite Councillor Susan Brown and Councillor Mike Rowley to propose Councillor Mark Ligo as the next Lord Mayor of Oxford. I'm really delighted today to be nominating my fellow Ward Councillor for Churchill Ward, Mark Ligo, to become Oxford's first citizen, our Lord Mayor. Mark is Oxford born and bred, born at the John Radcliffe Hospital and his parents and grandparents are also from Oxford. 
Mark's grandfather, Mike Ligo, was an active member of the Bullingdon Community Association and chair of Wood Farm Labour Party. Mark's mum worked for Unison and his dad, who sadly died a number of years ago, was a shop steward up at Cowley before setting up a cleaning business with his brother. Mark went to St Nicholas, Master Middle and then Cheney schools and has lived in Marston, Barton, Cowley, Northway and now Gypsy Lane in Oxford. Mark is the second oldest of five children. Older sister Debbie now lives in Australia and I hear she's watching so hello Debbie. Sister Sandra is in Milton Keynes, Louise in Barton and David is in Hampshire. Mark's dedication to working for his local community and his love of his family are key to understanding him. There is another Louise in Mark's life, as well as his sister. Mark met this Louise on a night out in Bicester when he went with a group of friends from Oxford. Louise, who also grew up in Oxford and went to school with Mark's sister Sandra, knew some of his friends and they got chatting. The following week, Mark just happened to pop into the bonus print where Louise was working, a trip that took him a mere 15 miles out of his way. And the rest is history. Mark and Louise have a large group of friends and enjoyed socialising with them. They were really excited to discover they were expecting their first child in 1998, but very tragically, their daughter Zoe was still born. Thankfully, they went on to have their son Sam in 2000 and daughter Emily in 2004, and both are doing their parents proud. Louise is also a dedicated public servant, working for the county council to support families and children. Mark's done a number of jobs over the years, including for a number of well-loved Oxford institutions. His inability to use the scales properly possibly ended his career at Bonners in the covered market, but he's delivered the Oxford Mail, packed olives, had his own cleaning business, and started as a teenager by waiting on tables at Queen's College. I hope they take the opportunity to invite him back to dine as Lord Mayor. Another thing you have to understand about Mark is his love of sport at all levels, but particularly grassroots sport. He's our sports champion. As a player, coach, manager and a referee, Mark's love of football is hard to miss. Mark's strange fixation on the importance of a good verti drain on a football pitch is legendary. Sometimes his love of sport is unfortunately combined with his ability to injure himself to unfortunate effect like the time he took Emily skateboarding and decided to give the Hannah Montana skateboard a test run. Putting a brave face on the uncomfortable pain in his shoulder when he fell off, he gave it another go. This time he woke up in hospital having concussed himself and the shoulder remained an issue, frequently dislocating. But Mark is always thinking of others, like the time he and Councillor Mike Rowley attended the opening of Blackbird Lee's pool. Mike took the plunge, unfortunately he'd forgotten how to swim. Mark spotted a comrade in difficulty and didn't hesitate. He jumped right in. Unfortunately, he dislocated his shoulder in doing so. They were both rescued and all's well that ends well. Mike's learned how to swim again and Mark's shoulder has now been pinned. For a while now, Mark has brought service to his community and his love of exercise together, working for Good Gym to do good deeds, including running, visiting the lonely, community allotments, and during the lockdown, delivering prescriptions across the city. As a ward councillor with Mark, I know his attention to detail to getting things fixed and improved in our ward has been transformative. He's also creative. Who else has funded a dragon in the woods? There's so much else I could say about Mark, but my time is limited. So I will just say to Mark and Louise, I hope you have a wonderful time. Mark, I know you'll make the most of this opportunity to involve as many local people as possible. And your grampy would be proud. Congratulations. I'm honoured to be asked to second the election of my good friend, Councillor Mark Ligo, to the Lord Mayoralty of Oxford in these unusual circumstances. I think Mark will be brilliant as Lord Mayor and here are four reasons why. First, rootedness. Any good councillor knows the importance of community and believes in engagement. Mark lives it. He knows everyone and everyone knows him. He shares the enthusiasm of anyone trying to improve our city or their local area. He's someone who gets involved on the ground where good things are really achieved. Second, determination. When I moved into Churchill Ward nine years ago, Mark had a bike accident on the way to the housewarming, but he still turned up with a graze a foot long down his leg. He insisted he was staying, only could he sit in the bath for a bit to stop the bleeding? Okay, mate. 
Seriously, no, Mark never gives up and often challenges portfolio holders and senior officers to do better. A lot of things have got better because of his intervention. Often little things, but it all adds up in terms of quality of life in our city and the opportunities our people have in life. Third, energy. How on earth does he do it? City ward, county division, good gym, football, many, many community things, as well as a hugely dedicated family man. I'm sure Mark will be a Lord Mayor who doesn't leave anyone out. I know he wants to achieve as much as he can for his great cause, grassroots sport, so his is sure to be a Lord Mayoral term that does a lot for health and well-being here in Oxford, particularly among disadvantaged communities. Fourth, generosity and solidarity. Constituents know that in Mark they've got a local representative who will listen, understand and focus on practical solutions. Someone who might not tell them exactly what they want to hear every time, but is always, always on their side. When I broke my arm out running, who dropped everything and came to the A&E to get me home? Mark did. And in between yelps of pain on the way, I thought... At least now I can join Mark as a sporting injuries pin-up boy. Maybe we can do a calendar or something. So there you have it. Mark Lagago is someone with a great love for this city of Oxford and for its people. Someone who makes a difference, who's genuinely inspiring, and from whom I've learned a lot. And most importantly, someone who always stands his round. So it's my great pleasure to second the nomination of Council Mark Lagago. Thank you. I formally declare Councillor Mark Ligo as the next Lord Mayor of Oxford. Congratulations. Are you wearing your chains around the house again? Well, I'm going to miss them. Yeah, but the last thing we need is another politician refusing to engage in a smooth transition. No, no, I'll be OK. In fact, I'm just going to call the new Lord Mayor now just to arrange how we're going to hand over the chains. Uh, can, you, can you help? Can you help me yeah, get I'll them off? Yeah, I'll take them off, of course. I'll take that for you. Mark, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, you'll soon be a uh... Lord Mayor and I'll be a former Lord Mayor, which uh, I guess has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. So I need to get the chains to you. Um, and uh, I've got the chains here, but the problem is, is lockdown. So I'm not quite sure. I, I saw something in a movie that, that might work. Um, okay. See if you can get these, okay? Okay, I'll try, I'll try and stretch out. Well, you got the chains? Oh, let's open it up. What have we got? It's like Christmas, come early. It certainly is. There we are. Are they all there? There's the Lord Mayor's. Good. Chain. Very good. The attachment, obviously. Oh, yeah. well, uh, Thank you very much, Craig. Yeah, I also wanted to give you this this T-shirt. Um, it's sort of, you know, sort of it. It's very popular, you know, with uh, and you will be find it quite useful for cycling and uh, running events and stuff. Where you, you can't really wear the chain. I, I tried it for a bit and I got a big bruise on the chest there. So. If I can I, imagine. Okay. Well, as we're talking about sport, let's see what your throwing skills are like. Well, I'll give it a go. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Got it? Oh, brilliant. Mighty impressive. Oh, size. You, you, yeah. You, you're a bit more slight than I am. Let's hope it fits you. <laughs> I don't know. We've had lockdown, so... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for that, Craig. Well, well uh, thank you. Uh, well, good good luck as Lord Mayor, and I'm sure you do a great job. 
Well, thank you very much. It means a lot, Craig. And I know that how much time and effort you've given um, to the communities and organisations and charities throughout Oxford. And I know they appreciate what you've done. Um, hopefully I can take that to my ne next 18 months and support many charities and organisations in Oxford. Um, I'd just like to thank you um, again for your personal support and advice. Um, and hopefully that'll help me very well in the next 18 months. So yeah, it's well, been an absolute pleasure, Craig. Thank, thank you. Along. The vaccine coming along, I think you'll uh, be able to enjoy the uh, get out and meet people a lot more than I was able to, at least in the next six months. Yeah, well, I hope so. Well, I think we just have to improvise the next six months. Um, yeah. So in where we can, sort of smaller groups, um, hopefully meet some of the charities that I'm supporting and do some small videos and just yeah, improvise and be a little more creative and hopefully we get back to a um, bit of normality and hopefully that will slowly be phased in um, in the latter months of my Lord Mayor's year. First day to the uh, Lord Mayor's appointment, uh, Councillor Ligo, I invite you to state and sign your declaration of acceptance of the office of Lord Mayor of Oxford, effective from the 30th of November, 2020. Thank you, Gordon. I, Mark Ligo, having been elected to the office, Lord Mayor of C Oxford City Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Just going to sign it now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ligo. I, I, I have witnessed you making and signing your acceptance of this office. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Well, this is it. Finally, Lord Mayor of Oxford. And what an honour it is. Hopefully, if elected next May, we'll have a chance to have an official ceremony at the Town Hall for everyone to celebrate. Being a local lad, Oxford born and bred, it's truly a privilege to be nominated as Lord Mayor of Oxford. I've attended many ceremonies over the years as a councillor, but more importantly, I remember the fond memories I had attending the Lord Mayor's parades, which I attended with my family, and hopefully we can do this maybe next year. As Lord Mayor of Oxford, I'd like to thank my wife, Louise, Lady Mayoress, and my two children, Samuel and Emily. And not forgetting former councillor of the Church Award, Joe McManus, and councillor Susan Brown for their continued support over the years. I also want to use this opportunity to thank and celebrate our hard working frontline staff, especially during this pandemic, and our charities and volunteers who will continue to support our elderly and vulnerable residents of our wonderful diverse city of Oxford. My theme throughout the next 18 months is to champion grassroots wellbeing initiatives, culture, sport, community, volunteering, and encouraging local people to embrace a more active and healthy lifestyle and remembering to help others less fortunate. As Lord Mayor, it's traditional to choose your charities. And I thought long and hard about this, as there are many worthy charities out there. I've decided to choose Wood Farm Youth Centre Art Tea and Oxfordshire Mind. The three charities have similar themes, aims and objectives. To use power of creativity, human connection to change lives, inspire community driven social change, improve well-being and quality of life for all by listening, connecting, being active, to keep learning and to support each other.
I'd like to call speakers Councillor Liz Wade and Councillor John Tanner. Thank you and congratulations Lord Mayor. I'm delighted to commend Councillor Stephen Goddard to serve as the Deputy Lord Mayor of Oxford from this day until our annual meeting in May 2022. It is a real pleasure to be proposing Steve who has been a great colleague to Paul Buckley and to me over the last few years. Steve has had the pleasure of being Sheriff of Oxford for not just 12 but a whole 18 months Although COVID has allowed him only one round up on Port Meadow, a great pity because it was a lot of fun. And one thing about Steve is that he takes a quite infectious pleasure in so many things. So walking across a waterlogged meadow at dawn in the wake of 150 cars is his idea of a good time. I know, I was there. Steve is a keen bird watcher, excited at present by the progress of migrating birds stopping off on the meadow on their way south. His 50th birthday last year was an expedition to the Gambia where the birds are apparently even more weird and wonderful than those on Walthercote Common. Steve's duties as sheriff have been more limited than usual, although he did manage to preside at a number of nursery school graduations, which are probably much more fun than university graduations. As a result of COVID this year, the Aunt Sally match, Sheriff's team versus Freeman, couldn't go ahead. But last year, I can report that the Freeman's team won, as they have done since the first match was reported in the Doomsday Book. We'll find it in the footnotes, but only if you can read Norman French, which happily Steve can. Steve is coming up for his first quarter century in Wolvercote, so he's getting to know it quite well. He is the ward councillor with field glasses permanently around his neck. And because he's always out looking for birds, he's constantly available to passing residents. Steve and Julia have brought up their two children in Wolvercote within a stone's throw of wonderful Wolvercote Common. I hope everyone listening knows about the Battle of Wolvercote. Not the one in the Civil War, but the much more important one in 1892, when the men of Wolvercote stood behind the Wolvercote ditch, ditch and faced off hundreds of men of Oxford who were attempting to incorporate Wolvercote into the city. Wolvercote won, of course. And the men of Oxford retreated in disarray, pretending that they'd just come for a pint at the plough. Steve, as the new Deputy Lord Mayor, is going to find his loyalty tested, but I have no doubt that he will always come down on Wolvercote's side. I can't fail to mention that Steve is now a star of stage and screen. As a semi-finalist in Mastermind, the nation will be seeing him in action in the new year. In Wolvercote, we will be on the edge of our seats. This is not just a man to go on the Sheriff's Roundup with. It is a man we are clamouring to have on our pub quiz team. I'm sure Councillor Stephen Goddard will do the City of, Lon uh, City of Oxford very proud as Deputy Lord Mayor and will provide solid support for our new Lord Mayor, Mark Ligo. Can we all wish him an enjoyable year and a half in these testing times and good luck for Mastermind. Thank you. My Lord Mayor, and congratulations on achieving that high office. My Lord Mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, councillors, uh, I have great pleasure in seconding Steve Goddard as uh, Deputy Lord Mayor uh, of Oxford, uh, a winner of Mastermind, uh, an academic and a Francophile. What more could you want? As, as this Wade has pointed out, Steve Goddard is a Wolvercote man through and through. But that didn't stop him standing three times in general elections against Andrew Smith MP, the, the Labour man. I remember the close fought general election of 2005 when every vote counted. I was canvassing uh, for Labour and a young woman came to the door and quickly said she always voted Labour. But who else is standing, she said. Oh, Steve Goddard is standing for the Lib Dems, I replied. In that case, I shall be voting Lib Dem, she declared. Mr. Goddard is a world expert on Flaubert. Yet another election I nearly lost for Labour. At that stage, I didn't know what a Flaubert was. Turns out he was a French novelist. Since then, I've uh, even read his Madame Bovary, at least in translation, and it really is quite good. But that encounter remains the most extraordinary reason I've ever heard, and I've heard quite a lot, for voting uh, Lib Dem. But today, I hope you will all vote for Councillor Goddard. I'm sure he will make an excellent uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Bonne chance, mon ami. Vive la France, vive Flaubert. Merci, Monsieur le Maire.
Congratulations, Councillor Goddard, on being Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, now we move on to the uh, appointment of the Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Goddard, I invite you to state and sign the declaration of office uh, of the Deputy Lord Mayor of Oxford, effective from the 30th of November, 2020. Thanks very much, Gordon. Um, I, Councillor Stephen Goddard, having been elected to the office of Deputy Lord Mayor of Oxford City Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. And I'm uh, just signing to that effect now. And here is that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gozard. Thank you. So I'm happy, I'm happy to confirm I've witnessed you making and signing your acceptance of this office. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to call speakers, Councillor Craig Simmons and Councillor Louise Upton. It's my great pleasure to propose Dick Wolf to be the next Sheriff of Oxford. Dick my, is my political colleague. He's represented St Mary's Wolf for the last decade. He's always been the most attentive, diligent and hardworking councillor. I count myself lucky to have worked alongside him for these last 10 years as a Green Party uh, ward colleague. He's also an excellent multi-talented musician and someone who has the most interesting and varied of careers. He's been a miner, a trucker, an ordained minister, a youth worker, asylum support worker and soon to be Sheriff of Oxford. We dick around who needs the village people. He studied at Imperial College on a National Coal Board Scholarship and latterly did his theological training here in Oxford at Mansfield College. Born in Hammersmith and raised in Hillingdon, his work took him briefly to the gold mines of Australia before returning to the UK to work in the Midlands collieries. In the mines he worked as a shot firer, a useful experience for a sheriff. He's worked in communities in Liverpool, Coventry and here in Oxford, Cumnor, Marston, Risinghurst and Temple Cowley. Uh, recently retired, he now volunteers for Asylum Welcome. He is also a passionate cyclist, not easy to spot as he is fast and low. He rides a recumbent, green of course, recently converted to an e-bike. He tells me he has cycled in 18 different countries and in 34 cities. He lives with wife Karen in a zero carbon house. In fact, it generates more solar energy than it uses. Dick and Karen have two kids, Sam and Anna, and Karen is also herself a keen cyclist and mean Aunt Sally player. Her name is already on the plaque in the Lord Mayor's parlour. As everyone knows, winning the annual Aunt Sally match is on very high on a sheriff's to-do list each year, so Karen's going to be a great asset. I questioned Dick on his horse riding skills, and as people will know, one of the sheriff's duties is to round up the cattle on Port Meadow. Although it's rarely done on horseback nowadays, it is a skill often associated with the role. So um, he told me he'd only ridden a horse once and he lost it. So the story goes, he was uh, riding with his brother and wanted a drink, pulled up in true cowboy style to a bar, tied up the horse outside, uh, went inside for a drink, came out and found the horse was no longer there. Now, to be fair, Dick says it was his brother's responsibility to tie up the horse, and it wasn't a horse but a pony, but otherwise the story is entirely true. So uh, luckily the pony found its own way home, so uh, no animals were hurt in the retelling of this story. So, but Dick is the nicest person you could possibly hope to meet, and a true friend. He will make an absolutely amazing sheriff. Good day, everyone. It gives me great pleasure to nominate Councillor Duke Dick Wolf for the office of Sheriff of Oxford for the coming year. Uh, Dick has been a councillor for 10 years since 2010, um, initially combining it like many with a, with a day job, though in his case the day job was also an evening job, a weekend job and particularly a Sunday job. 
Um, although he has now hung up his dog collar and exchanged his flock for the ward of St. Mary's, um, Dick does have other transferable skills from previous jobs, uh, particularly I'm sure his time as a youth worker in Liverpool, um, but he's also a qualified mining engineer. So uh, I'm not quite sure when that will be useful, but if the county ever were tried to push ahead with its schemes for trams under the high street, then we may well be needing Dick's advice. Um, but now Dick is a, he's a councillor for the Green Party and he really talks the talk and walks the walk for that. Um, or perhaps I should say he walks the cycle or, or even better, maybe cycles the cycle. Um, he always arrives at the town hall on one of his bicycles. Um, although I think he has now got rid of that most dangerous looking one, the recumbent. Um, but of course, the, one of the most important jobs of the sheriff is the annual roundup of cattle on Port Meadow, um, where we all meet at the crack of dawn uh, to check that the right number of uh, cows and horses are there. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing Dick there and I'm wondering if he's going to arrive on a mountain bike. I do hope he is because I think that actually might include, it might improve the rather sketchy results we've had over the last couple of years. Um, one, one of my first roles as a councillor was to sit on a scrutiny committee sub-panel on cycling um, and a lot of good things came out of that panel, um, helped very, very ably by Councillor Wolfe um, and these things have made small but significant improvements in the working in, in, for cycling in the city. Um, but working with Dick then it quickly became very clear to me that he knows Oxford like the back of his hand, including all its paths, all its cycling shortcuts, um, and he taught me a lot about how to get things done on the council, which was very helpful to me as a new councillor. Um, two important things you should know about Dick are that he has an allotment and he volunteers with Asylum Welcome. And those two things, I don't think you could have a better character reference than that. It speaks to his love of the outdoors, of, of nature, of nurturing, um, of, of striving to reduce your carbon footprint and his very outward looking and, and welcoming nature um, and you know that more than makes up for the fact that he plays at a folk music group. Uh, it's not easy being in opposition especially in a small group on the council but Councillor Wolf has really thrown himself into it with great energy um, and he may be in opposition but I think we agree on far more things than we disagree on so I'd just like to say again I am delighted to propose Councillor Dick Wolf for Sheriff of Oxford. Congratulations, Councillor Wolf, on being Sheriff. Uh, and now on to the appointment of the Sheriff uh, for the year. Councillor Wolf, again, I invite you to state and sign your declaration of acceptance of the office of Sheriff of Oxford, effective from the 30th of November, 2020. Thank you, Gordon. I, Dick Wolf, having been elected to the office of Sheriff of Oxford City Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. And I will sign it. Okay, lovely. Uh, so again, I just uh, I just confirm I've witnessed you making and signing your acceptance of this office. Congratulations, uh, Councillor Wolf. Thank you very much. I'd like to call the speakers, Councillor Mary Clarkson and Councillor Andrew Gant. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and many congratulations on your election. I am very pleased to thank the three outgoing civic office holders for all they have done over the past 18 months. All of you have done a wonderful job both before and during the pandemic to represent our city. I know there will inevitably have been challenges and disappointments over cancelled events, but I do hope that this extended period in office has been enjoyable for all of you. 
Councillor Simmons, you pledged to be a zero emissions Lord Mayor and you certainly put this into practice throughout your time in office. Your travel across Europe in February and March by train to visit Oxford's twin towns of Bonn, Leiden and Wrocław to take the greetings of the people of Oxford was particularly memorable. And it was also important as a way of demonstrating that there are better, more interesting ways of travelling which are kinder to the planet. Presenting the freedom of the city of Oxford to Benny Wender last year was a wonderful occasion and reflected on your own long-held commitment to human rights across the world. Both at council meetings and during the pandemic, we have been grateful for your calm approach and we have really valued your recorded messages of advice and reassurance to the city, advising people to observe the public health advice and to keep each other safe. Councillor Goddard, as a ward councillor for Wolvercutt, it was good that you were able to carry out the traditional roundup of horses last year on Port Meadow and to take part in the annual gathering of city sheriffs. As we know, Port Meadow has become particularly precious to the people of this city during lockdown and so it has been good to have you there as both its ward councillor and its protector. It's also been really good to see you build up your media profile as a quiz expert and to see you enjoy more success there than in the Aunt Sally match. While it was a bit disappointing that you didn't get the answer to a question on political scheming in the House of Cards, your ability to turn things round, to come back from behind and narrowly win was surely a model for all US presidential hopefuls. Councillor Altaf Khan, we are grateful to you for your continued service as a civic office holder. During the pandemic, your work with Oxford Mutual Aid in supporting vulnerable individuals and communities has been key and very much appreciated. Thank you all for your service to this city and council over the past 18 months. Thank you, Mary, for proposing the vote of thanks to the outgoing office holders. It's a great honour to be asked to second that vote of thanks. Fellow councillors, distinguished guests, it's very good to join you here in the splendour of the panelled assembly rooms in the town hall, all dressed up in our finery again. Well, actually, I'm standing in the park in the cold, but uh, it's nice to have a chance to wear a suit. We've all got used to looking smart from the neck up. Mary and others have described the contributions of our magnificent civic office holders extremely well. Steve has combined his duties as sheriff with all of his other activities, professional and otherwise. As a leading tutor in French in the university, he has had to adapt to a rapidly changing world, safeguarding the interests of the students. And he's one of those colleagues who's made a point of delivering all his teaching in person, which I know is valued enormously by our students. With the one exception that Steve explained that it's actually impossible to do a French language class with a student who is wearing a mask, which seems probably understandable. As sheriff, he's had to deal with the problems caused on Port Meadow by the relaxation of the lockdown a few months ago. And of course, a couple of weeks ago, we had a evening meeting of our council group when Steve said he had to slip away at half past eight to catch an episode of Mastermind, on which of course we all said, oh, why is that Steve? With results that we all know about. We don't yet know the result, but Steve has form on this kind of thing, on broadcast brainy quiz shows. You may not know that he appeared on Blockbusters in 1987. You may have caught him on Brain of Britain on Radio 4 last year when he did extremely well. Although I have to say I had one of those nice moments when I knew the answer to a question which the contestant didn't. It was Camberwick Green, Steve. Of course it was. Everybody knows that. Steve has said that he had the pleasure to welcome the Sheriff of Nottingham to Oxford as part of the Association of City and Town Sheriffs of England and Wales snappily titled group of lads there and also how pleased he was to be able to raise money for Wolf Young People's Club and Wild Oxfordshire during that weekend. Steve brings huge commitment and experience to his role. He is involved widely across the city and community and he's also the only person certainly in our council group who can pronounce Grenoble Road properly. Altaf has been a wonderful ambassador for our city as Deputy Lord Mayor and of course as a former Lord Mayor himself. 
Altaf has a reach into the community and the wider world beyond what the rest of us can do. He has recently shared with us a video from a Kashmiri television station with footage of him laying the wreath at our uh, curtailed Remembrance Day ceremony here in Oxford. Altaf has begun a Masters in International Relations, maybe the start of pastures new and reaching out even further into our community. Altaf has an ability to speak for and to a wide cross-section of members and residents of our community, not just here in Oxford, but across the world. And he's been a wonderful servant of our city as civic office holder. Craig, as our Lord Mayor, has chaired council meetings with calmness and professionalism, not always an easy task. He had a charity dinner in Ifley earlier in the year, at which he uh, was playing uh, playing music, another skill which uh, he, uh, among the many that he brought to his uh, job. He has projected his own values and visions, particularly through his use of social media and sharing public information messages around public health and the values and vision of the of the council. And I'd like to thank Craig for all the calmness and skill that he has brought to his role as Lord Mayor. Colleagues, I'm honoured to thank our outgoing office holders for their service to our city in difficult times and for shouldering those duties for an extra and unexpected six months. I cannot propose the formal vote of thanks in the normal way, but I'd invite you to metaphorically raise a hand, whether it's an electronic one, a blue one, an actual one or a legacy one, to thank them. I think that's unanimous. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank the outgoing civic holders for their continued hard work and support throughout the year and everyone watching. Take care and be safe.